In this video, we're going to learn how we can conditionally implement methods based on trait bounds. And this will be the final video on traits before we jump into lifetimes. Conditional implementations let you add methods only when a type's generics meet specific trait bounds. You do this with the implementation, followed by the trait and whatever bounds it has. For example, if we have a pair that takes T, this can always call new, but it will only get CMP display when T implements both display and partial ord, because printing and comparing require those traits. Rust also uses blanket implementations, where a trait is implemented for every type that satisfies a bound like how toString is automatically implemented for all types that implement display. This approach keeps your types flexible, prevents misuse, and exposes richer APIs only when the inner types are capable of supporting them. So first, let's take a look at an example of how we can define unconditional methods. And for this example, we're going to create a struct called pair, which holds x and y of type t. Next, we can create the implementation block that uses it. Now, this method will work with T no matter what type it is. It is available for all the types. If we want to create conditional methods, we're going to have to add some bounds here, such as display and partial ord. And obviously, if we want to use display, we're going to have to import it from the standard library. Now, inside here, we can add CMP display. Before we use it, I'm going to go up here and just paste in the previous implementation because we need that as well to simplify creating new pairs. And now in main, we can create a pair. We can say let pair equal pair new. And inside, we'll pass in four and 10. As you can see here, we can create a pair of any type. This works with any type because that's what we defined over here. And since the elements or the type of these elements satisfy both display and partial ord, we can use CMP display with this pair. So right now we can type in pair dot CMP display. And when we run the script or when we run the program, we will get back that the largest member is Y and that it holds a value of 10. Now watch what happens when we introduce some types that do not satisfy these straight bounds, such as vectors, we could pass in one, two, and three, and four. It would no longer work because we have some unsatisfied trait bounds. So this method will not be available to these types. And finally, let's cover blanket implementations. Blanket implementations allow implementing a trait for all types meeting bounds. An example would be the standard library implementing two string for all types that use the display trait. But for this example, we're going to use the debug trait. And this trait is going to be used to describe an object. Then right below, we can create the blanket implementation. So this will be implemented for all types that implement debug, allowing us to use the format macro with the colon question mark format specifier. So since we told Rust that we want T to be of type debug, we can now use this inside the method. So now in our main function, we can type in something such as let number equal 42. Here we can type in print line, provide a placeholder, and then we can type in number dot describe. And just like that, when we run this, what we should get as an output is that this value is 42. Without this bound, Rust would not know what to do here. 